Hello again and welcome back to another one and today we have a couple of topics involving the latest stories on M, Kendrick Lamar, Drake, LL Cool J who spoke about the significance of some of the scenes on Mother Graham Do with M and we also got more from Red Man and Method Man, Future and Metro and their take on the whole Kendrick vs Drake battle that was set in motion with Like That from their collaboration album and to be fair some of these stories have triggered some hip hop fans on social media especially Future's take on the battle so we have a lot to unpack in this one and even LL Cool J made some comments that raised eyebrows so stick around and starting with the latest on what to expect from M in the near future we got a teaser from DJ Who Kid just hours ago on IG stories where he revealed an incoming M and Who Kid interview on the Way. Talk about interesting timing, since fans have been eager for a new interview, especially after Joe Rogan's comments about M recently, so be on the lookout. And moving on, Redman, Method Man and Raekwon recently dropped a Red Bull Cypher, and we got to hear more from them thanks to a latest Billboard interview that goes, Method Man, Red Man and Raekwon on the art of the cypher, it is about culture. And M and Kendrick were brought up in response to some of the questions. For instance, when they were asked, outside of your own, what's the best cypher you've seen in person or on film? Red Man expanded. I like Kendrick Lamar's freestyle on BT. Him and TDE. There's so many elements to a freestyle. It is not just about bars. It is the movement, the body language. My favorite part of Kendrick's freestyle was when he high-fived Schoolboy Q and he continued Eminem too. M always bodying ish. What he was talking about during the BT Hip Hop Awards freestyle. The purpose he was talking about when he was freestyling is what I liked. He could have blacked out and just went ham but he talked about purpose and things that was going on so i highly respect it and method man added my favorite moment i wasn't there but it was when buster and dirty had that cypher it was kind of like a battle but it wasn't but it was very respectable and he added i also really liked the slaughterhouse slash m cypher that ish was dope they were killing it. I also liked a battle rapper cypher that they did on their own. Everybody caught a body on that. K-Shine killed it. Those are the ones that stick out in my mind. And when it comes to rappers rewriting verses, like when Kanye admitted that he cleared his schedule to rewrite his verse when he heard M's verse on Forever. When I heard Eminem's verse on the Drake shit, I went back and rewrote my shit for two days. I cancel appointments to rewrite. I fucking care. <laughs> this question was brought up. Sometimes you hear about people changing their verses on posse cuts. An MC will hear a verse and go, I might need to change my verse. What's been your experience with that sort of thing? And Red Man expanded. If I jump on a record with somebody, I record in my own studio. Before I send it, I live with it for like two to three days. I'll be very skeptical of myself. I don't worry about what the next man is saying. It is really about my purpose and what I'm saying. I might go back in. I might switch a couple of words before I send it out. And he continued, like me and M, when we wrote the record for Off The Wall, we wrote the song right there in the studio. I flew to Detroit, we wrote this song right there in the studio and we laid it and we didn't go back. I didn't hear his vocals and I was like damn, I should have tightened this, I should have said this, I need to go back. No, we was very happy with what we wrote. And speaking on a rapper doing pop collaborations from time to time, Redman recently revealed huge benefits sometimes. Check out a snippet from his Red Bull interview. Oh my God! My publishing check, nigga! Christina is like one of my favorite collabs because I did a song called Let's Get Dirty featuring DJ Cool. What up, Uncle Cool? And she liked that so she he made an R&B pop version of that record. So I got on the record and after that, that shit took off. We was everywhere, bro. She brought me on tour, we was overseas. That album, Dirty, was one of her biggest albums. And we was everywhere. And I got to actually see how a pop artist shake and move through this industry. And it's another level than hip hop. And plus, my publishing check, oh my God. My publishing check, nigga, was I couldn't believe I got that much money for one verse. It was over like 250K my first check. And 
moving on, we got to hear from Future and Metro Boomin about the Kendrick vs Drake battle and things got quite hectic on social media based on what he had to say about it, especially Future. And here's a quick rundown from GQ. Metro looks to have some regret for the things he posted on X about Drake. He stated, Now I did have my moment online, which I do regret. I should have been stronger than that. That was out of character for me. But at a certain point, it is like I don't rap, bro. So you are gonna just crap on me on all these songs. I'm not gonna get in the booth, so I'm finna tweet at you. And the future was trolling and ended up triggering a lot of rap fans in the process. First, he spoke about the big three being J. Cole, Drake, and Kendrick. He said big three on my song. I'm supposed to be the one who gets mad. I'm still confused about that. That's what was so effed up about the ish. To the point where I'm so player, I ain't even said anything to the public about how I feel about it. Like why is everybody mad when he was talking about me on my song? So y'all just forgot about me? I ain't part of this big three. I'm nobody on my song? Man, if I didn't get mad, nobody should have gotten mad. If I would have been re really mad about it and I made something out of it. And this next bit sent many fans on social media over the edge when Future was asked about the beef between Drake and Kendrick and he responded, there was a beef? I didn't even know there was a beef. I didn't even know they had nothing going on. I ain't never participated in rap battles, man. And in response to Future playing dumb, Academics posted this. Told y'all word came through that Future claimed he ain't know Kendrick was gonna do that dumb-ish going at Drake like that. Whether you believe him or you think he's plain stupid is up to you. However, some users have fired back with a snippet from Roddy Rich's Big Boy interview where Roddy revealed they all knew. Check it out. It's too Which like one? that. Like that. Yeah. Okay. You know Pluto and Metro, them like them like that's like my, you know. Did you on, know it was they coming? They on, they on my Mount Rushmore. Gotcha. I knew it was coming. We heard you know, we we talked. So I knew it was coming. I just didn't know what it was. Right. I didn't know what it was. So, you know, we was at uh where was we at? I think we was at Larrabee when we listened to Future's album from front to back. Mm. But when, was that verse on there? Oh yeah. Okay, gotcha. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we listened to it and 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 we knew we knew we had to strap strap our boots. Right. You know I mean? But did did you understand what that was when it was with Drake and when it was with Kendrick? Did you know like okay, there, there, there's something going on here. There's there's I a mean, movement. Here. What it was for hip hop, man. You had two two of the biggest guys, you know, uh uh getting in the ring and boxing. You know, real mm -hmm. sports shit. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And um I think it was beautiful for the culture. And Metro and Future have been accused of tap dancing by some hip hop fans. Everybody who was involved in the biggest beef in hip hop history are just tap dancing around the main conversation and interviews. And more, it is becoming clear that Drake and Kendrick Lamar are the only ones that stood on business during and post beef. It is really Kendrick Lamar at number one, Drake number two, and then everybody else. But what are your thoughts on everyone else involved, either backtracking, trolling, or tap dancing around the whole battle? And we got academics right now agreeing with Kendrick Lamar that Drake does indeed need Atlanta, and so he wouldn't be surprised if Drake makes peace with the people who set him up in the first place. Listen, everybody keep thinking that, yo, Kendrick is just a hate ass right? Whether Kendrick likes him or Kendrick dropped five, um, not like us. What Drake can't afford to lose is, is the heart and the core of Atlanta. And if him and Future were really going at it, I think all Atlanta artists would stay out the way. They would be like, yo, bro, it's Pluto, my nigga. We, you know, we ain't Gucci, but we ain't going against Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? And the most important thing I think Drake could do is to make sure, and that's why I keep saying the election. Yeah, of course I want him to be like mad buddy buddy with a nigga who clearly was trying to end him, whether he's trying to acknowledge it or not. But I do believe that Drake needs Atlanta. I do think he needs Atlanta. For what Drake does, Drake needs Atlanta as a region. I believe he needs certain international influence. Like, again, you got to remember, Drake is like a behemoth that, that's this otherworldly type of shit. So when I'm saying that he needs these people, it's not need these people to just it, it, for the reign that he has, which I personally believe Kendrick has been jealous that no matter how good he raps, 
he's not tapping into one fifth of the audience that Drake does. And this is actually fact. No matter how much you like um, Kendrick, go look at the tour sales. Go look at the tour differences. They they both did the same arenas. Drake made three times as much as him. Go look at every metric that compares him. Drake is like five times as much. How do you get to be that point? Well, you need to have certain places. And Atlanta is one of them. I think no one in hip hop could really go against Atlanta. Atlanta is just, you need Atlanta. So yeah. And moving on, we got LL Cool J out here speaking on the significance of Rock the Bells and also what they did on the Murder Gram Duel music video with M. Check out a snippet from Big Boy TV. The problem was I felt like these artists that were so pivotal in the culture of American history and American music history and global music history were being treated like commodities. They were being treated like their only importance was their most recent chart position. But I didn't see that to be the case in any other genre. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go out of my way to lift these people up. I want Run DMC to be treated a certain way. Rakim needs to be treated a certain way. Big Daddy Kane needs to be treated a certain way. Like even something as simple as the Murder Gram Do, and I'm gonna get back to it, but even the Murder Gram Do video. Listen, me me and M doing album covers and M doing Big Daddy Kane, that doesn't, that's not, that ain't like personally, personally benefiting LL or personally benefiting M. That's about us lifting the culture up. Kane deserves that. He deserves to be treated that way. We gotta treat each other that way. That man's going, that good things will happen in his life because of that. So it's like, that's kind of the way I approach it. So when I started doing this Rock the Bells thing and I started seeing it, it's like, yo, we can lift these artists up. Yeah, man. We can throw festivals. We can throw cruises. cruises. We can have merch. We can have licensing. We can do all of these wonderful things for these artists instead of just talking about it, instead of just running off with the jibs. Because a lot of people just like to flap their gums, but they don't want to make, they don't want to make no move. And as it stands right now, LL Cool J ranks Murder Ground Do as his favorite new song. And we found out about this when he was asked to list his top five songs. Check out a snippet. I didn't do I Need Love. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't you know, have a top five? I mean, probably one of my, my two favorite songs, one is old and one is new. Probably one of my favorites would be Doing It. You know what I'm saying? Just because like, it's just like the perfect freak record. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah, think man. it's fucking funny. Yeah. I just think it's funny. And then um, I like um, Murder Gram because mm. I just think, and it's not because it's new, because I'm, I'm able to, with me and M, like, I just like that song. I think that song is crazy. And then I like Mr. Goodball, you know what I'm saying? I like Ill Bomb. However, it was the next segment that raised eyebrows on social media when LL made an interesting claim on the podcast about being the first rapper to start the trend of wearing Jordans even before MJ became a legend. You know, it's like Duke Ellington, it's like Count Basie. Mm. They're just certain people who make a contribution to a genre. And I just happened to, God just blessed me to be one of those dudes who made a larger, an oversized mm. contribution, an outsized contribution to the culture. And How it's you, like, I mean, even my first album cover, I had the, the, the Jordan sneakers on when he was a rookie. I was the first person with the Jordans on, on the radio album cover. Michael Jordan was a rookie when I when I did, I had his sneakers on. Everybody was wearing Adidas and Pumas, bro. I put the Jordans on. <laughs> he didn't, didn't even, even have no championships. That. He was just a rookie, I liked the sneakers. I thought Is that on the back? Yes, hundred percent. Even that. So it's like I could take you down, like, but it's it's trippy, man, because I don't know how all of that shit happened. I couldn't tell you, bro. I can't sit here and try to take some kind of incredible credit for it and try to paint myself as a. I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, because all I did and all of this stuff is follow my instinct. And while some are asking, why do rappers always want to be praised for being the first to do something? And to this, a user hit back with, because if you don't remind people, history will tell a different story. And this is true, even though it may sound silly at first, as if you don't address it quickly, history will be rewritten in your face. If you recall, this even started to happen to M's legacy, until he started to call out people on kamikaze. And for the most part, M has successfully halted the covert effort to rewrite history and minimize his contributions to hip-hop. You have 
have to speak on it from time to time or else. And I'll be looking forward to your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.